right, so today I got a new stock of CP200 radios. These are used radios. I get them like that because they're cheaper, but they usually work just because these things are incredible. So I'm gonna show how to program these, but I'm also gonna show how to program a CP200D so you can kind of see the difference. This has a D at the end. You might not be able to see it in the camera, but that has a D and this just says Radius CP200. These things are advertised as having better battery life and better range. I haven't really noticed that. I mean, these things last all day anyway. We use these things for eight to 10 hours. We don't go far enough away to where we have problems with communication so for us these are interchangeable so i know the number one question i'm going to get is going to be where do i get the software the answer is get it from motorola now we have plenty of batteries in stock so we're going to be able to make sure that these things are fully charged when we go to program them because you don't want these things to die while you're programming them now the only other thing that you really need to be aware of is that some of these are vhf and some of these are uhf now all of these ones that I have here are all UHF just because that's the frequency range that we work at. But if you have VHF, you have to get VHF CP200s. So how do you tell if yours is a VHF or a UHF? You just pop the battery off. This is on a CP200, not the D. And if you look on the back here, you can see the model. So the model on here is an AAH50R. So the R indicates UHF. If that was a K, AAH. 50k that would be a vhf radio so the way you program these is a little bit different they each use their own independent style of software but the cp200d has a micro usb port in the back now you can't just use any micro usb cable but it has to be thin enough to be able to fit inside of here so it'll just plug in like that and you plug this into your computer to transmit on the cp200 you have to have a cable that's like this so it has a 3.5 jack i'm not even sure if that's actually 3.5 but you're going to use this plugs in here right where you plug in your mic so the nice thing about these is that the batteries are interchangeable so this is my cp200d and that's my cp200 all right so we have a fully charged battery that we can start programming these you can see this little clip that somebody put together for us it uh, it looks ugly but it actually works really well so yeah it's a thing so i'm going to plug this in make sure you're using the bottom port not the top port and we can turn it on and it doesn't matter what channel you put it on as long as it's on you're good it is important that we install the software before we plug this in but after the software is installed we can plug this in and the only reason that that's important is because we want to make sure that we have the drivers on the computer for this cable before we plug it in otherwise it's just going to show up an exclamation point or a question mark or something all right so for the cp200 we're going to use cps for the cp200d it is moto turbo so two different softwares for two different radios okay so first we have to check and see which port this is in so i'm going to device manager and under ports usb port is listed as com3 so that's what we're going to use so we're going to go to edit preferences and make sure that this is set to the correct com port so whatever that was listed at that's what we set here and let's use basic and read so this will tell you all the information if you want to figure out what all the channels are it's going to be right here so so this is channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four. So the people that had this could have used a four channel radio instead of a 16 channel, but uh, that's what they got. So this is how you can read one of the radios that you already have if you have a CP200. And if you want to transfer this to a CP200D, you just figure out what these uh, frequencies are, just write all this down, and then in Moto Turbo, you can plug all this information back in. If you want to save this profile, hit save, and then create a save point. So we'll just call this uh, someone else is put that on the desktop all right and then if i close this we got this right here so i can just double click on it it'll open up cps and it will automatically have everything that we need to program a new radio now if i want to write this to a new radio write will write everything that's in here including the serial number so it will not work if i try to write this to a different radio so what we want to do is we want to hit clone so clone will clone all of this information but it will maintain all of the information required to keep that radio correct so clone is our friend i don't want to clone this program so i'm going to close that i'm going to open ours which is this one here so this has all of our information in it and i'm just going to hit clone So this is just saying that uh, you know there's more channels here things are a little bit different are you sure you want to overwrite it and that is a yes all right there we go so when you hear that little beep that means that it is complete and everything is good so it doesn't take very long at all test 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 
<laughs> test, test, test. Okay, so that one works. So for the CP200D, just gonna plug this guy in, turn it on. And plug it into the computer. All right, so that means we do have a connection. And for the CP200D, we're using Moto Turbo. So you can see up here, this is a different type of software, but it works basically the same. So we don't have to set the COM port because this is a USB, so we're just gonna hit read. And we can see that this looks fairly similar as the CPS.exe. And from here, we can also do the same thing where we just hit save. And then we could choose where we want to save this to so that we can just open this up directly from that point. We don't actually have to read a radio. We just always have it on the computer. And unlike CPS, we don't hit clone on this one. We hit write. And so that's it. Again, it's a very simple thing to do. If you're having a problem with these radios just turning off randomly, then it's usually the battery. Place the battery, that problem goes away. Second thing that usually happens is that when you have a mic on here like this, sometimes it gets kinked, and when that happens, it breaks the connector on the inside, and it it doesn't really break the connector as much as uh, a little solder joint on there. So what you do is again, there's a tool for that. I just don't have it. Pull that out. These are Torx head screws. So there is a solder joint right here that always breaks. So whenever that presses, it pops that thing off and then you have to resolder that. Resolder that and the mic works again. all about getting these two metal tabs underneath that plastic lip. There we go. You can't mess these up because they're two different sizes. So just line it up and uh, stick it on. So we are working. But I bought a bunch of these mics and four of these work out of the seven that I got. So I'm gonna try to figure out what's going on with those. You can see the light is flashing, so it's receiving, but there is no sound coming out of that. Then if I get it just right, it stops. There we go. Yeah, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We got some kind of an intermittent thing going on here. We got there aren't any screws or anything holding this tight so it is just the pressure against the wire That's not happening. So it looks like the only way I'd be able to do this is if I was to get a new strain relief or just a replacement cable. I think the uh, the moral of the story here is don't buy used mics, even if they say Motorola on them. So these batteries were in various states of charge when I got them. So they're almost all, all the way charged now. They've been charging for a little while. There is no heat on here, which is great. 
just reducing the footprint of all those chargers and all those transformers. Unfortunately, I only had to use one of those Aeromax batteries, so that's one of them. And the rest of these are still the original. I just had one bad one. I don't even know what I did with it. But uh, yeah, all these, these are all backups. So that is one fantastic hookup.